Martin Liz, hello. I don't worry about your background. I think it's <laughs> one of the best I've seen, actually. <laughs> I'm having my house renovated, which is why the walls look a bit strange. But anyway, oh, well done. Well, Leslie had a very nice bookcase, I have to say. Um, Liz, a very warm welcome to you and um, many, many congratulations on your award winning painting. Um, I know that uh, when I phoned you and said that you'd had an award, you were really ecstatic and, uh, you know, surprised. And it was lovely to have that conversation with you. Um, about your painting after the storm and you've won the um, uh, the Daniel Smith award and uh, obviously that comes with um, some lovely Daniel Smith paints and also some really new uh, and imaginative Daniel Smith dot cards and I, I'll talk to you a little bit about that yeah. at the end but Liz just tell us a little bit about after the storm I mean it was such a lovely um, phone call when you sort of phoned me. I was such a lovely surprise because I'd never won anything before for my paintings. So that it was really lovely. Um, but after the storm, it was sort of based, we had some really bad storms at the end of September. Um, and I obviously live in Cromer. And I just like going to the beach most days. And it had really changed after these storms. And there was lots of shingle, shingle banks, and they'd really moved. And they were a lot higher up the shoreline than normal. And it was just sort of grey and just with the wet shingle it sort of like really looked atmospheric so that sort of like inspired this painting and one of the other ones that I also got selected as well. Yes I mean you've got three paintings selected in all which is fantastic Liz but we'll just focus on um, after the storm first but I would yeah. like to link, link in the other two um, as well. You, it, It's really interesting this uh, painting and um, I'll tell you a little secret. My husband was wanting to buy it <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't discourage him. But by the time he got round to it, it had been sold. So congratulations oh, thank on, you. on your sale as well. Um, no, if you look at it very closely, there, there's a lot of different textures. And clearly the Daniel Smith prize that you won was for imaginative use of texturing. And I just wondered whether you could describe the process that you went through to get those different textures? Yes, of course. So when I paint, I normally start at the top of the paper and then sort of gradually work down. I don't wet the paper generally all over beforehand, but I use a lot of wet paint um, and then move it about on, on the paper. Um, and with this, I, I sort of started, I put one layer of paint over, sort of like all different washes. Um, and I'm quite impatient sometimes, so I have to tell myself to sort of let layers dry sometimes. But while the paper was really wet, um, I've started scoring into it. So I've got like a blunt instrument. You can use sort of like a wooden stick or I've got actually a metal implement. While the paper's wet, don't actually scratch the paper, but just sort of like mark into it. And especially where the breakwater is on this painting, um, you can see where the little lines are and then the pigment soaks into the paper more. Um, so that sort of creates a lot of texture. And then sort of moving down, um, I let the first layer dry and then I, I worked over it again. Um, and it, it's sometimes you, you look at a painting, the first wash sometimes works really well. But with this one, I think I did several layers because I've really had to work at at this because it wasn't didn't have the depth and the contrast that I really wanted um, so that's why then it's got several layers over the top um, and I built the shingle up you know that's had sort of like that was too dark and then you can see just in the foreground where I've gone over the shingle again um, with some gouache um, and then just picked out the highlights um, in a white pastel pencil, just where the sort of waves are coming along the shoreline. Yes, I, I really love that um, jaggedy white line. I think that that for me, that really sort of sets the scene for the whole painting. It's it's a small mark in a way, isn't it? But yet yeah, it's, it's very really, small, really, really effective. And and, uh, you know, to the right of the line, you can see a lot of detail on the pebbles and you've got the light and the dark. And then on the left of the line, you you can see right through the water, right to the bottom of the um, of the water, of the channel. 
and I and I really love that. And I can see now you're talking how how you have built up those layers, and it's very very effective. It's it's absolutely beautiful. And then I've sort of used lots of different techniques as well. So, you know, I start with sort of very loose washes. And that's the thing that I really love about watercolour sometimes is I feel that the watercolour actually creates the painting for you. You know, if you use very wet into wet and sort of move the paper about, um, and then you can just sort of go over it and over it again. It looks as though you've used a bit of ink around the pebbles how did you highlight this, the sort of circular shapes the the jagged, um, and the jagged shapes yes well I, I i like sort of loose watches and i also like spattering so the spattering sort of a little bit further up with the dark the smaller shapes but the the sort of larger pebbles in the foreground um they were done with like a Payne's gray and just painted on and um, that was they were too dark when i let them dry so i've just gone over at the top again with sort of like Payne's grey and some gouache mixed in, and but not gone over the whole top of the pebble, so you just get that outline of the pebble. Mm. If you watch too much paint on, I just dab it off with some tissue or something, and then sometimes you get just an outline remaining. So you you do use white gouache because it it blends in so beautifully in your painting. It it doesn't look as though you put it on it afterwards if you see what I mean it looks as though it was part of the the washes as you put them on yeah I, I find generally because I, I use it quite thin I don't not a really thick paste it tends to sink back into the watercolor so you don't get a like really harsh white mark and Liz you've used on this what this painting and in fact your other two paintings you've used a, a fairly muted palette and I wonder you know how important bearing in mind this is after the storm how important that color palette was for you with this painting i, I think well, very important because it sort of like encapsulates the scene of, of that day you know after the storm it was still very gray the sky was gray um and all the all the beach was still very wet so it just sort of that that was the tonal values of, of the beach that day you, know, you could go another day on the same beach and it almost looks like a tropical beach you know you get some more turquoisey colors um so that that was just the, the day the time i went um and how i saw it i know a lot of artists love to know uh not only the make of paints that you use you may not have used daniel smith paints on this but and also the the colours that you use. I know you haven't used many and you've mentioned Payne's Grey already, but what was your colour palette, Liz? Um, well, I had Payne's Grey. Um, I, I love indigo, so I have indigo on most of my paintings. Um, there's a cobalt blue on this one. It's just a little streak of it, sort of just below the breakwater. Um, I think there's some sepia on there. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. Um, I think it's... Um, forgotten mine's gone blank um but <laughs> I, and they tend to, I, I use a lot of Windsor and Newton paints but I do have some Daniel Smith paints um and there's some on here's lunar blue which is beautiful because it sort of granulates as well and you know it granulates blue and there's a gray in there so that's a beautiful paint so I was so excited to actually win some more Daniel Smith paints to try them out yes and I noticed um I was very envious when I packed your parcel up uh, Liz, because um, I noticed on the dot cards that you've got some of their, some of the Daniel Smith new colours and the yes. translucent, the translucent palette as well. And you know, when I was looking at your painting now uh, for this interview, I just thought, oh, what are you going to do with with those new colours? I know I haven't thought about that yet. I've left them, so I'm saving them, you know, for something special. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I've never heard of dot cards either, so that's a fantastic idea. It's amazing how much coverage you can do with a tiny dot of paint, actually. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, you will use them. I, I just thought they were lovely. Yeah. Um, Liz, is there anything else about your award winning painting that you'd like to say that we haven't sort of lifted out from our conversation? Um, I think the only thing I'd like to say really is sometimes um, I find, especially with watercolours, um, it sort of comes together quite I wouldn't say easily, but um, you're obviously in the right frame of mind. And sometimes you just put a few watches on and you think, oh, yes, that's 
that's finished, that's complete. Whereas with this one, um, I had to leave it for a while and then go back to it and keep working at it and keep working over it. Um, I think it's important sometimes to leave something but then persevere with it as well because you can always generally get something out of something, even if you just um, use a small section of a painting, there's usually something there that's, you know, you know, that's worked really well. I remember, um, you know, when I did a course after I retired and wanted to do a watercolour course and my tutor at the time said, never finish a painting during the day, always wait for the morning after and have a look at it after, uh, you know, after yes. it's, it's dried and settled overnight. And for me, I think that's really, really good advice. No, definitely, because sometimes you sort of do something and you think, well, that's absolute rubbish. Um, you know, I'm not going to get anything out of that. But when you go back and look at it, you think, actually, that's not half bad, you know, and then you can do something with it and you can work over it, you know. So I think it's just persevere and, and sort of never give up on a painting, really. Uh, absolutely. Well, that gives us all great comfort, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work, does it? Oh, no. Um, but, you know, well done on this award. Uh, winning painting it is it is beautiful well done Liz thank you um you've got you've had three three paintings all together yeah it's very lucky including this one and I think your other two um is it breakwater and salt marsh storm yes yeah, storm yes um again you used a, a very similar palette and and actually when the three of them are up on the exhibition site I don't know whether you thought this but they go so well together don't yeah, they yeah they do yes yeah, they tone really well together. And, and I thought, you know, it's a lovely, lovely collection. I mean, clearly um, Breakwater and your award-winning painting are more similar, uh, whereas the Salt Marsh Storm, in a way, you, you haven't sort of done so much texturization, have you? No, well, the Breakwater one, I actually did at the same time as, as my award-winning painting. Um, I, I generally do that. I sort of tend to work on two or three at the same time. Um, but with the Breakwater, because it's a very similar composition, if you look at both of them. Um, but I felt with the very loose watches on that, that worked almost straight away. There's still some texture in that where I've used um, just sort of marked, scored into the paper. Um, so it's the same tones, but there's not so many washes over that one. Um, but with the salt marsh storm, to me that that's slightly more abstract. And I've tried just to use one brush, which is a flat brush, to paint the whole painting and try and use different marks using just one brush. Because I think sometimes I've got so many brushes at home. It's, you know, you sort of think, which one do you use? And it's just trying to limit yourself sometimes. Yes. Um, well, and see I, I what you like can do with that one brush. Yeah, sorry, Liz, I didn't mean to interrupt. But no, I, that's I, fine. I like the chunginess of, of that one as well. And you can yes. see that you've used the flat brush and it's also very translucent, the washes. Yes, I think with that one in particular, because I was trying to go for a more abstract feel and with these big, bold, bolder brush strokes, um, and I left it... I sort of put the blues on and then I left it and then I went back and where the paper was still white I just added some colour over the top, some of the yellow, it's, I think it's actually a green gold over the top and that really just lifted the whole painting. Yeah. So it's a very simple sort of painting. It is simple but it's it's so fresh and and clean and clear and and it you know you can almost imagine really easily being there and I know you're inspired a lot uh, by the outdoors Liz and I just wondered if you talk a bit about your your outdoor processes you know when you see something you want to turn into a picture what what happens what do you do um well it's usually when I'm out out walking and um, I've got two dogs you might be able to hear one whining in the background um <laughs> Yeah, I take I take lots and lots of photos. I I very I very rarely, if ever, get outdoors. I quite often buy a sketchbook, thinking I'm going to start working in a sketchbook, and then I do a couple of pages, and then I just I just forget. Um, so I take lots of photos when I'm out, um, and then when I come back home, I go into the studio. I used to print them out, but I don't anymore. So I've got an iPad, and I take that into the studio. And I get the photos up in the studio and then I just sort of flick through them and, and work from, from photographs 
don't want to try and recreate the photograph. It's just the tones and the shapes. Um, so it's, it's usually I, I paint something that I've just seen quite recently. Something just catches your eye, you know, shapes, textures, tones. I mean, this time of year, I usually start painting trees because I love the skeleton of the trees, you know, against the sky and the colours this time of year. So generally, just when I'm out and about, something just sort of catches your eye and you think, oh, I just want to sort of put that down on paper. Do you experiment much, Liz, either, you know, out and about or in your studio? Um, I, I do sometimes. I, I think it's so easy to get stuck in a rut. Um, you know, you can, like, you get used to a particular style that works for you, and I think sometimes it's really important to, to try something different. So I do try every now and then. I sort of think, oh, I don't know what to paint now. Um, I'm going to have to try something completely different, you know, or, or ripping up things. Um, I went on a Lewis Noble painting course, which is fantastic. And you sort of do lots and lots of paintings and then you rip them up and then you sort of stick them back together and then you work over the top. So that's a really interesting thing to do. It's quite hard actually to rip your paintings up because it's almost like if you're happy with one, you don't really want to do it. Um, but I like to try diff using different textures and different materials together. Um, I like, I've started using watercolor on, um, get cradled panels, so sort of put gesso on there and using watercolour with acrylic um, and compressed charcoal. So I like to try different things. I'm sorry, my dog's making a noise. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I do like to try different things and combining different mediums together. I think your dog's saying that he really likes the fact you paint because he gets nice long walks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's probably saying, I want my tea. Uh, Liz, thank you so much for talking to me and also well, talking to all of the artists and, and, and people that are looking. But is there anything else you, you would like to add about your artwork or the society um, or, you know, the Daniel Smith Award or, you know, any aspect that you'd like to mention that, that you haven't had a chance to say as yet? Oh, no, I'd just like to say thank you very much to the Society for selecting my paintings. Um, it was such an honour to win an award. It was, it was really lovely, um, and that means a lot. Um, and no, it's just lovely to be part of, you know, this online exhibition, and thank you very much. Well, well done again, Liz, and a, a big thanks to Premium Art Brands for providing the Daniel Smith paints and your award. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I think it's a fantastic exhibition. I think the fact that we're interviewing like this, all of the winning artists has, has really given a richness to the exhibition, you know, particularly because it was online. And it's lovely that artists can show their work now, bearing in mind the last eight months and how difficult it has been yes. for, for several of our artists. And, you know, I thank you for your contribution and well done again. Oh, on thank the, you. The painting. Thank it's been lovely much. to see the other interviews with the other artists as well. It's bye. lovely. Thank you, Liz. You take care. Okay, thank you, Mel. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.